Welcome back to Divas Diamonds and Dollars podcast. Cecilia and I are here to regale you with all the news and intel that you need to continue to grow and become. Divas Diamonds and Dollars podcast talks to all of you. And by all of you, we mean the whole you as you are living your best life. We love sharing all the little tidbits that you need to help you answer those little questions that have got you scratching your head, those conundrums that are choking you up with mystics. And we are excited to talk to you today about the topic no one wants to talk about. You know what we're going to say, the bright future. And so what we want to talk to you about today is um, making sure that you have a bright future. So I want to know, do you sometimes wonder if you'll ever be able to retire? Sometimes it might feel like you're going to have to work until you just keel right on over. Well, my question to you is, what if it doesn't have to be that way? If you start thinking and planning now, as in today, party people, before you get too far down the road, then things just might work out. When work gets to be a grind for you and you just cannot face another day of commute, we sometimes dream about retiring or traveling and or maybe spending the time volunteering or what other what ifs of a distant future. People are actually living longer, actually until recently that is. And there is still the real possibility of outliving one's money and we don't want that to happen to you. But we're healthier and we're better educated and likely to be around for a really long time. So we'd like to suggest putting some thought into the things we do need to think about and make plans to give ourselves a real chance so that things actually do work out. And that's what today's topic is about. Pre-retirement planning, not even the retirement planning. This is a pre-retirement plan. These are all those thoughts you need to talk about before you start getting close. So for example, um, you know, there are a lot of companies, if you will, that help you plan for it. I don't know that my company is one of those. And Cecilia actually worked for a grown-up company. So she's going to talk to you about that. But um, before we get there, I just want to suggest the basics that number one, realize that someday you are going to have to stop working. It's not always going to be fun in the sun. And you know, it's not really fun in the sun unless you love your job. And I know not all of us can say that. So the basics are start thinking about what you want to do. Definitely enroll in your company's 401k plan because it's no longer 30 days and a 30 days. Ah, 30 years and a gold watch. Those days, I don't know. Those days are um, seriously long gone. So you cannot really um, look for your company to take care of you. You need to do your own planning so that you can take care of yourself. And I'm not sure how much reading you've done, but the doom and gloom is that Social Security is going to run out. And aside from Social Security was never designed to be your sole source of retirement income. It was always designed to be a supplement, but I know people think about, oh, when I retire, I'm just gonna get social security. Let me tell you, I work in the affordable housing industry and I happen to have the um, senior portfolio. Um, we have, I don't know how many properties and there are a mere handful of people who've done quote unquote the right thing and they have savings and investments that they can live on. So yes, you can still have investments uh, and savings when you, get on into affordable housing. So don't think you have to be poor to get there. But here they are, they've done the right thing, but they still can't afford to pay the rent on their own. So getting old is expensive. Um, and I know we're gonna be forever young and maybe we haven't thought about what to do when we get older, but even the best planning is sometimes gonna need a boost. And that's the part that we want you to understand. So whether it's your company's 401k plan, social security is only going to pay a part of it because even though I quote unquote make good money, it is just right this minute going to cover my rent or my mortgage as it were. Um, but sometimes I like to eat. I might want to take in a movie. 
what if I want to go see Rome that I haven't seen yet for some reason? I'm just saying, so there's more to life than the rocking chair. I don't want anybody listening to this podcast to be thinking that they're just going to retire, collect the social security check and hang out in the rocking chair. Nope, nope, nope. So you're, you're going to be a lot. I'm, I'm, I'm projecting that um, even though you may have a certain number of days on the calendar, that isn't normally or actually the same age that you feel. And I'm anticipating that the calendar says X, but you're like, but, but, but I still have all this living and all this energy and all this life. And these are things I want to do. And we want you to be able to pay for all those things. And so that's why we really want you to get started now. That was pretty close to a ramble. So I'm going to let Cecilia come in here and tell you something sensible while I collect myself and we can get back on track. Sister dear, help me out. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I call that a warm up. So thank you for the warm up. So I can't say I've had the pleasure, but um, I am living, breathing, having recently retired. And everything Larissa said is true. So I agree. Retirement, you know, for a long time, you know, this, when I say a long time, I mean, just thinking about retirement was one thing. But once you decide that you're, you're going to tell people you're going to retire, all of a sudden I'm thinking, okay, there's something wrong with that word. Because, okay, yes, I've done the planning. I've done the paperwork. But I'm not going to retire because I'm an active person. I'm a doer. I'm going to look the same as when I walk out the door. So uh, just to go along with Larissa said, that is the state of mind that we want you to carry away, that you are still going to be, you know, moving and grooving because after all, divas and diamonds and everything that we want to put into that is who we want to be. So you do have to plan. So a little bit about what you can do and, you know, got to throw in a, you know, a few of those scenarios that do happen to people. That's why it's called planning pre-planning, pre-retirement planning. Well, let me tell you. So for me, um, I did work for a company. And, you know, if you follow us, you'll hear me say, you know, over time, but I'm just going to leave it for a company that did offer these pre-retirement seminars. And I will tell you that I have told people, I have, after going to them, I've said to people, you must go. You have no idea what you're missing if you don't. The first one that I went to, it was actually mind numbing. That's how much information that you have to prepare for. I mean, there's a lot of companies out there. You when, Once you start reaching a certain magical age, whatever that is, you start getting postcards in the mail. Uh, universities offer retirement planning. Credit unions offer retirement plan. And, you know, oh, come to get your free dinner. And I'm like, uh, okay, no, thank you. Because I always felt like they were trying to sell me something afterwards. And they probably were, which, you know, it's not all bad, but. At the end of the day, by all means, you must, if you can go to one, I recommend that you go. In my case, I had one with work. Okay. So when I say mind numbing, I'm talking about two days of listening and taking notes in a book, right? So um, I would recommend that 10 years out, really, if you can, if you're 10 years away from retirement, that, that's not too early. But okay, let's say you're five years and maybe some reason you even missed that. Well, two years. Now, here's the reason why. Because life happens, things are going to happen that you don't know that might, you know, what may affect you. But um, like Larissa mentioned, Social Security. She mentioned investments. Well, there are a lot of regulatory things that affect all those things. So you actually have to have some picture of, you know, what age you want to be when you retire. Uh, what do you plan to do? She said trips. I love to travel. So I had to consider what kind of money am I going to bring home 
And she's right. It's not going to be just Social Security because Social Security really won't pay for, you know, your standard of living. I mean, for some people. So I don't mean to minimize that, but probably not. Um, it's, it's certainly not going to be the salary that you had. So uh, Social Security, very important. Well, guess what? Depending on what age you are, you got to even think about Medicare. Medicare is going to kick in age 65. What does that do to you? Uh, a big one is health insurance. You got to plan for that. So when you plan for these things, there's planning on paper, but it really is, what is your lifestyle today? Today sort of sets the stage for how you hope to live in the future. So one of the things that I did once I got close to it was I've always kind of used a budget, you know, for paying bills and for what I wanted to save and yes, invest because whether your company has a 401k or you have to do it on your own, you have to put money away for a rainy day, okay? So for me, I, you know, kind of had this trifecta, if you will, the planning of investment, the insurance planning for your loved ones, if you have any kind of family, and then uh, your health. Health, you know, all of those things affect your, your style of living in the future. So at some point, if you haven't opened your retirement savings plan, you need to do that. And there are two types, individual retirement accounts, traditional and Roth. So we're not tax advisors or, uh, and I'm not a financial advisor, but I know enough just to be dangerous, but you know, please take note, Roth or traditional, it makes a difference. And there's information out there that will tell you what works best for you. Uh, draft and estate plan. Again, these are just buzzwords because as I told you, I'm taking two, two days worth of information and kind of, you know, we're boiling it down to, you know, my 15 minutes contribution here. So um, we are gonna do a future podcast on estate planning, very important. Um, but, and I, and Risa can talk a little bit more about the dividend stocks and annuities, but the real point here is there are just so many decisions to make. And I'm one that I would say I'm not risk adverse, but nor am I very frivolous. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of in the middle. So with that being said, um, we call an understatement to say, uh, not very frivolous. And this is from the wild one. I, I, you know, you have to know your risk tolerance. I'm sorry for the interruption, but that was just too funny. <laughs> so, because I know you. And yeah. uh, what I want to say is, as I rudely interrupt, is that, you know, I already said uh, join or participate and enroll in your company's 401k. But what you need to do is you need to manage those assets, no matter, it's not just signing up. You have to know your risk tolerance. Like, you know, are you going to be tossing and turning every time there's a dip in the market? Um, first of all, quit paying all that. You know, you don't need to watch it every 15 minutes because that will send you to cray cray real quick. Okay. But you do need to know your risk tolerance and that is, um, and choose accordingly. But you also need to consider your timeline. Like, again, first of all, we're talking about when you plan to retire, but sometimes you are retired before you planned. So you have to start now because life is what happens while you're busy making other plans. That's one of my favorite sayings because it's so darn true. Mm -hmm. You plan for the best. No, you hope for the best and you plan for the worst, right? So it is beyond the scope of this uh, short podcast and I will be holding training on, on investing and how to choose and what types of um, investment vehicles that you should look at or consider. I hate to use the S word, but you know, should. Um, but what I want to say, there are just so many moving parts and 
the, one of the benefits of getting started early is the compound interest, and that is making money on your money. So um, no, making money that you made on your money. Again, see, I said it's already beyond the scope of this podcast, but that is a time element. And that's why we just really can't hammer it home enough that you do need to start early. And I'm going to turn this back over to you. But I wanted to say about the 401k is that once you are over 50, there's what they call the catch up clause is that, you know, you put away whatever percentage you put away. Ideally, you can do seven, 10 percent. Um, I just bumped mine up. So I was quite proud of myself. Thank you. Because they say you um, should save your pay raises, don't spend them. And so I was happy to use my raise to increase my 401k. And my company happens to have a very healthy um, company match. Not all companies do provide the match, but you know what? Get in anywhere, whether they match or not. But if they do match, you 200% need to get in because otherwise you're leaving what I call free money on the table. And that is not how you get to that bright future. Never give, never you know, miss out on the free money. That was close to a ramble. I'm bringing it back. What I want to say is when you have the 401k, um, each year the IRS tells you that you can put in X amount of dollars. And I did not write that down. But what I did write down was as we record this, if you are over 50, you can put an additional $6,500 over the, the regular maximum for the youngsters. Um, so, you know, if you have the uh, ability to do that extra month, Obviously, this is for you. This is not, you know, for anybody else. So if you have that ability to say, put in this extra 6,500 or buy a new car, I'm going to suggest you put in the 6,500 because that will pay off much, much more greater dividends um, in the future. And so, sisterly one, as I trounced you for saying that you're not frivolous, (laughs) I will let you finish your thought. What else did you want to say about that? Well, I think you covered it pretty well. I was, in fact, one of the, the terms that you used was going to be what I was going to kind of put a period to was high, medium, and low risk. What is Thank your you. strategy? I couldn't say that. Thank you. So with that, um, just kind of touching on a couple other things that uh, you put stoned about matching mm investment. And I'm, I'm 100% there. Uh, I, I, and the reason Risa and I do these is because we really do care about other women getting the best out of life. Um, even though I am not a financial planner or retirement planner, but I do get on my soapbox with people that I know, uh, you know, trying to advise particularly young, well, young, medium or old, to look out for themselves and don't just be high consumers. And I'm gonna tell you that, I mean, it's really sad when, I mean, I've known people who've made good money who did not live well in retirement. Now, I also know that again, life happens, right? You, like you said, a rainy day, things happen. It could be a bad health situation. Um, There are some other things that you, can look at when you're younger, it's better. The things to look at when you're younger really are life insurance and long-term care insurance because you're gonna get a better rate. Um, you can you know, start building up a little nest egg that way. So all of these things, they are pre-retirement. That's why we call it pre-retirement planning. We're throwing a lot of things at you but it's like a lot of things that you have to start working on really. And you know, you can get these little fancy planners. I mean, your banks have them, you know, online. Well, you don't even have to do that. Get you an Excel spreadsheet and just put down, you need to, it's amazing when you start tracking what you spend every month, you know, just do 12 months and cover everything. And I'm not talking about your bill bills, but uh, your bills are your bills because they have to be paid. I mean, so you can have two different types of things you track. You can have an income and outgo where you track all of your bills and what you have left over. But when you really track to see how much are you spending at Starbucks? How much are you spending eating out? Of course, gasoline, you know, we don't necessarily have control over that, but it might make you think, okay, I need to kind of consolidate some trips here, right? 
cleaners. Well, we women do like to look good. So yes, there's the nails and there's the hair, but then there's Sally's or Ulta's, you know, you might, might need to start tightening the belt towards the end. So when you really think about, you know, what am I looking to and what I want to walk away with, it's a lot to take into consideration. Um, I tell you one, ladies, when we start getting a little bit more mature, well, guess what? We have friends that are also in that, maybe in that same uh, age range. Range And so this is a weird one, but this is what I track. I track cards and flowers. Mm. So you know where I'm going with that. Mm. Maybe I need to send flowers to somebody. So I track that just to see, you know, um, gifts to somebody else, um, special dinners. You know, maybe there's a family dinner that you're, you're, you take responsibility for. There's just so many things that we just live every day. As long as we have money to pay our bills, we're like, hey, we're golden. But when you don't have the same income and now you're trying to do everything that you did before you retire, it's, it's, it's a lot to consider. So that's why I'm saying so much about um, having, having a budget, tracking your spending and sticking to it. One other thing I'd like to add that's kind of along the same line is paying down debt. So yes, you have to have living arrangements and, and Larissa talked about affordable housing and I'm sure she'll come back to this. There's a lot of things about the housing, but so I'm just gonna say whatever, if there's a mortgage, uh, do you have um, a home equity loan? You know, a lot of times, oh, I paid off my mortgage. Yeah, but do you have a home equity loan? You might not be paying off that mortgage if there's a lien on the property, or it may be separate. Those are things sometimes people don't track. You know, sometimes it's kind of like, oh, it's free money. No, 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 it's not. So uh, I advise people to have uh, a short-term, near-term payoff plan and a long-term payoff plan particularly for the bigger hitters. Uh, usually a car is one. Maybe, I don't know, there's some other kind of uh, special investment, maybe for the yard. So um, just wanted to throw those out for, here's the big umbrella of pre-retirement planning. So you need to start. What do you think? Oh my gosh, let's start there um, because First of all, that is really interesting. You know, once upon a time when my, when I was just getting, becoming aware of financial planning and money management, if you will, we just call it money management at all. There was, I do remember seeing that category gifts on, you know, you know, you get a template on your budget and there were gifts on there. And I've moved around so much that I maybe didn't have a very big gift category. So I, you know, cause I don't know a lot of people that way. Um, but that is really fascinating and very true because my um, husband's family, if you will, was a very large family. And for a period there is like, we're going to a very lot of funerals. It's like, oh my gosh, again. So that's also very true. Um, oh, there's just so many things every time someone says something you know your mind takes off it's like and 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 so before we you know turn your hair gray prematurely first of all we're not going to leave you hanging we do have a pre-retirement planning uh handout for you that you can download from our description box so make sure you do that first of all and it doesn't cover everything but i bet you it will give you some serious food for thought um and, and the point about paying down debt is just so critical that I have to mention it again. And because, you know, when you buy a house, which I did a few years ago, um, A, I was super excited, but the house kind of needed to be furnished. And so, yeah, I did rack up a little bit more debt than I'm comfortable with. And I have a pretty good tolerance for debt, right? But now as I'm getting a little bit... Um, more grown, if you will. I refuse to use a word, but as I'm becoming more grown, I'm like, I need to get rid of this debt. And so that is an overwhelming um, 
what is it called? Priority for me. So that is another reason to become a multipreneur is that you have these additional income streams to help you pay down that debt. It's not work for the sake of working. You are working because you are building this bright future and that includes, yes, retirement planning, but it also helps you have additional monies to pay down that debt. We want you to live the good life without the debt. So um, those were some... Um, some good reminders for me. So I have to say, thank you, sisterly one. Um, I'm not depressed yet, but I do appreciate the reminder. And we hope that you are taking these reminders to heart. So, you know, one of the other things, one of the other reasons I wanted to have this particular conversation was because there are, <laughs> there's just so many things because talking about your home, if you own the home, you know, you're young and spry and you're doing cartwheels down the hall. That is awesome. But uh, at some point you may want to, what is it called? Um, outfit your home with some additional fixtures. Like, what if you want to install grab bars? What if you need a um, taller toilet, if you will, because your, your knees are not quite, you know, enjoying the, the crease, the, the bend that they have, the, the flexibility. So these are some modifications to your home. That's what I wanna say. If there's some ways you need to modify your home now, number one, while you still have the money and number two, while you are still out and moving about. I mean, some people decide to sell the house and that may end up being part of their retirement income if that's what you want to do. But if you plan to age in place, there are some things you might want to do to your home. So that is also hugely important or the walk-in tub. I don't know that I necessarily want that, but I know that becomes a thing sometimes for some people. They don't necessarily want to stand in the shower. So, you know, it's a little bit earthy, I know, but those are three really good things you might need to think about if you are going to remain in your casita. And yeah, paint. So that is, I, I talked about having debt when I bought the home. Um, but that is also one thing I'm aware of. I did have a HELOC home equity line of credit for you will, um, which I know some people use their home as a bank. That is not why I tell people to buy a house. I tell the people to buy a house for other reasons. Again, a topic for another podcast, but don't try and turn your house into a piggy bank because that will, you can get in over your head super quick and then it's super dangerous. And then you'll be working for forever, literally until you keel over. And again, that's not what we're about. So get the house because you need the house for other reasons, not because you wanted to fund your lifestyle. If you cannot pay for your lifestyle without getting a lien on your home, you're probably gonna need to make some changes. So that's as bossy as I'm gonna get, I'm just saying. But uh, we, we talked about our loving family members. So having your wishes in writing before you go, um, is, is it, it creates some peace of mind for you and maybe the family members because they don't ever like to talk about it. No one wants to talk about the what ifs. We want you to talk about the what ifs and not only talk about it, we want you to plan for it and get it in writing because whether you have family members or maybe even particularly if you don't have family members, what do you want to happen with your goodies? So again, that's... Um, our next podcast. We want you to make sure you tune in next week so you can get all the deets on that. Now, when we say draft an estate plan, that's not like we were. Again, we're not attorneys, but attorneys cost money. So when you go to the attorney, you want to be boom, boom, boom. You want to have given some thought to what you want to do. So that's what we mean. And that's what we're going to talk to you about next week. So uh, make sure you talk to us, uh, listen to our podcast, Getting Your Life in Order for more information on that because again, that's planning for your life and your lifestyle and to some degree, your family's life, if you will. If you have assets and you probably have more assets than you think. I was, again, when I became began exploring money management, um, the trigger, if you will, for having an estate plan is if you have assets of you know, hundred thousand dollars or more, um, you need an estate plan. And if you don't want the state to come in and tell you how to do it, you need an estate plan. So anyway, that is um, one reason we're excited about next week's topic. So we do hope you tune in for that. Anywho, um, so the other thing about <clears throat> excuse me, affordable housing. Is that, first of all, it's in quotation marks. I'm in the industry and I'm telling you, it's in quotation marks. 
Um, people think about Section 8, and that's fine. Section 8 does limit your share of the rent to 30, no, actually one of 32% of your income. Um, not to, to make you lose sleep over that, but what I want to say is if you think that you will need some assistance to help pay your rent or uh, pay for your living quarters when you retire, you want to get on the list now. No, I'm, I'm just saying now, I don't care how old you are because that's how long the lists are because housing is just super expensive. And it does take an unreasonably long time for your name to come to the top of the list to be get called so you can get some assistance. And the other thing I wanna say about that <clears throat> is that you do not have to be poor to qualify for affordable housing because there's also the tax credit program. You're not going to remember these names. I understand that. What I want you to remember is if you think you will need assistance when you get older, I'm suggesting you apply now because it does take a long time for your name to come to the top of the list. And it is a great benefit. And these are not quote unquote projects that you saw what in the 60s, maybe the 70s. These are nice modern buildings with they're clean, <laughs> clean. they have um, you know on-site management, they have I don't know, some amenities, but they're very pretty and they are clean and they are well-maintained. So don't be too proud to apply if you think you're gonna need assistance. <clears throat> that is one thing. And oh, the other thing is that, and I haven't looked at it, but let's say that you are um, fit and spry and you know want to still again, live independently in your own home. There are developments specifically for the 55 plus. So, and those are even nicer than the uh, tax credit properties, for example. But what I wanna say about that is that these are homes that you can own, um, but they are less expensive because they're specifically for seniors. So you have many options, but all these options require what? Oh yes, planning. So here we are, that's us telling you, that you are going to have a lot of choices. This is going to be an exciting time of your life. I mean, I'm still working. She's the lucky one um, because I can't imagine sitting still. So I enjoy working and I enjoy building my businesses and I enjoy working with and helping other people. So I'm good. But for those who are, um, but I don't plan to work forever. Okay, I'm not going to work until I keel over. So I am still, I'm, I'm still in the thick of it all right now, but I know that I am I'm working toward a place where, um, you know, I want to do more travel or I do want to have more leisure time. So that is why we're having this conversation with you and with myself too at the same time, by the way, you know, I'm just saying. So um, I'm pretty excited. I want you to get excited because I'm sorry, I keep saying, and one more thing, one more thing. This is crucial. You got your pencil? Okay, write this down. What you want to include in your retirement planning and actually what you want to include in your today planning is exercise and nutrition. Because You're one, on my calendar. Huh? Yeah, go. One of my biggest concerns is that I want to live independently as long as I can. I don't A want to be a burden on somebody. And I don't want my livelihood to be dependent upon my kids to take care of me because that might that might be scurry. So um you have to take care of yourself and the healthier you are, the stronger you are, and um, <clears throat> the better quality of life you will have. So even if you weren't doing it before, mm, uh, you do need to you know, get some movement going in there. And in particular, you need to consider some weights. Weights are just as critical as the cardio, as the walking or whatever you're doing for yourself. But please, may I use the word please, take care of yourself. So all these wonderful things that we're telling you, you will be able to um, enjoy and benefit from, but you must have the health to enjoy this new shiny lifestyle. Okay? So I know you were going to say something and I was still talking. So what was that? <clears throat> Did you lose your thought? Oh, perhaps, but I can um, kind of give my, so one, um, I live what you just said. So uh, that's actually, definitely a great input um, for those who know me. I, I'm i about the whole person, which is what we talk about. And yeah, you know, there's work. And that was my whole reason for saying, nope, about retirement. Yes, I'm a lucky one in that I am able to have a good retirement check to do what I want. 
However, that's because one, I planned. Two, it's with that planning, it was not just that one and done, it's also, well, what do I plan to do after I retire? So a couple other little tidbits are, um, so depending on what your work profession is, for me, it was a professional career that I had a lot of clothes, but guess what? I am not doing that today. And so as I knew I was getting close to retirement, I stopped buying certain things. You start really looking at what you're going to do in the future in terms of what your needs are. So that's one of the things that we didn't necessarily mention. Um, you know, the big thing is to be healthy. So for me, it was starting to, you know, do that so that I could do some other things when I retire, which required me to have good health. Um, but some of the things that you bought before, even for maybe your coworkers or your own people, you won't be doing that anymore. So there are a lot of positives about the pre-retirement planning. There's some scary parts, but there's some, oh yeah, because I started ticking off things. Oh, I won't be doing that anymore. I won't be doing that anymore. So um, just to, uh, Risa gave a great pep talk on getting ready for it. But um, I just want to add, there are some good things that uh, you can think about. And as you think about what you plan to do, it's, you know, how you're going to, what are you going to do with your time? Because it is a big decision. So you can have everything down on paper, but you still really need to reflect upon it. Because one of the worst things that people, uh, what that some people have encountered, they had everything like they wanted it but they weren't prepared for the absence of doing something. When you retire and you don't have any real thoughts about what am I going to do when I wake up? You know, 24 hours is 24 hours. And they were just sort of lost. And some of them end up going back to work. So um, uh, my ideal way of retiring is one, to go out on your own terms, and to live the life, the best life that you can, the way you want to live it. So uh, just want to add that, don't diminish the thinking part, the reflecting part, because that too is also very important. Uh, there is a psychological change, if you will, in the adrenaline and the endorphins that occur, you know, that we get from exercise. Hey, maybe now you'll do something different because when you retire, you still want your brain working. Well, you gotta do something for that to happen. You know, sitting around every day, watching TV is probably not it. Um, you know, how are you gonna interact with friends? We are social creatures. And even though this past year we've been locked away in a pandemic. And so, I mean, there's some waters to navigate here. So just want to, kind of give you the, the whole site picture. There's a lot to think about for pre-retirement planning. So we talked about 10 years or whether it's five years. At the end of the day, whatever you, know, whatever you do, you don't want to retire one without knowing what you need to live on for a period of time. Because uh, if you're in good health, you know, you might be 30 years. Out. So you got to think about, you know, what you're going to live on for 30 years. And I love what Larissa said, because I have the same thoughts. Don't want my children to take care of me. I actually met a lady who said, well, generationally, that's what they did in their family. They took care of their parents. I'm thinking, well, I, does, I can't fault that, but that wasn't. So it was whether you're taking care of parents, because that can impact your and that can impact your retirement. So that's something to think about for that dimension but also, you know, the impact of your children or grandchildren. It's a lot to think about, ladies. It's a lot. So I just wanted to kind of put a little bit of spice into everything we've talked about that um, planet so you can go do you. And over to you, Larissa, for the last comments. 
Wow. So that was actually, um, that was pretty energizing. I'm pretty, um, I really hope you got some golden nuggets out of this conversation today, because I think it was a helpful. And of course, as a reminder, you get to hear part two next week, um, because we said a lot today, but you know what? We did not cover everything. So make sure you tune in next Sunday for essentially part two of this conversation um, because we want you to be excited about your next act, if you will. Um, and Cecilia did mention it. And so I will just foot stomp it. And that is to um, really consider the social aspects of it. There is a group called stitch.net that um, I signed up for, and that is for people 50 plus. And <clears throat> because social isolation is real for some people who get older, because maybe their whole life was their job. And now that they're out of work, they don't know what to do with themselves or who to do it with. But um, make sure you have some type of uh, social aspect of your uh, retirement planning, because it is critical to your mental and emotional well-being says the non-professional one who has lived it just want you to know that is something you do need to think about so anywho anyway we want you to be excited too so thank you for tuning in to today's episode and don't forget to download your free retirement planner from um our description box if you will and we will look forward to talking to you next week and same time same station thank you so much Today's podcast of Divas, Diamonds, and Dollars was brought to you by Pink Passport Society. That is a community of lady moguls who are growing and becoming and enjoying the business of life well lived. We invite you to visit pinkpassportsociety.org to find out more. Thank you so much, and we will see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>